not as good. So if he's able to take the tam that he's known for and win the weekly move on to the monthly with so much momentum, yeah. that would be fantastic from Trotter. Yeah, you know, funny enough, I've been seeing a lot of comments over on YouTube saying, hey, what's a good tour tonight, team? Hey, plus, you have a good tour tonight, team? I can't wait to upload these because this is their answer. <laughs> this is apparently a really good tour tonight, team. And it's not just tour tonight. Of course, it's Trotter. Of course, it's those other Temtems he has on his back as well. But yeah, I mean, funny enough, it's so weird that we're getting a really good uh, tour tonight tamer bringing it to the limelight as Trotter. But yeah, it's just so funny. I just thought about that. But hey, here it is. We have made it. The time is now. Finals is among us. Trotter, as I said, the number one seed. Gold, the number seven seed. Uh, one of these tamers is a previous champion. Trotter, though, trying to make that himself here very soon. But maybe Gold has a different agenda, of course. Yeah, so first bans on that Volarend, and then the Nidrasil. I guess Gold knows how much damage Nidrasil can do when there's no fires and no Volarends to fight back. So that was kind of a ban of necessity, which means Trot in a pretty good spot. He does lead with the Adora Boros, which leads for Gold. This Valash that we saw wreak havoc in the semifinals. Kinu to buff him up early on, and now oh man if if trotter loses the naga oh that is a very good ban from gold the speed control taken away just like that yeah and i like this opening you still have that toxic synergy for the water canning opener uh doesn't let the madness buff get off scotch free you could double into it actually actually you could split but kinu most likely not going to be staying in uh so we'll see i mean just good damage all around doesn't let the madness buff as i said super super free as it's just gonna be heavy damage and usually water cannon will be going before that madness buff so you don't get that uh double de special defense uh mitigating that water can damage yeah but I, I think that madness buff is still probably where gold is going to go um you know, it's we, we saw it beforehand, of course, the the Valash and the Size Munch, but I, I feel like Adoraboros has such high special defense that unless it's holding on to that strange vest, it's not going to go down on turn one, and, and it can't really fight back right away. It's not going to have Inner Spirit available. It's just going to have the neutral damage of a Beta Burst. Yeah, I mean, we'll see right here. Oh, the Chamomile Yukama. I don't think we saw that a little bit earlier. I must have forgotten. Uh, but let's get into it. Orin. And hey, Trotter with a lot of OTs uh, to his name. It looks like every single Temtem on his side. Perhaps an OT as he did get to rename him. But Kinu, as we said, not going to be staying in. Does swap into the Shween. So trying to provide that Guardian trait onto Valash. Perhaps getting ready for the Water Cannon. And Crystal Spike does almost exactly 50%, so well done, even with that double screen. Yeah, but now it's the Synergy Master Water Cannon as well, with that Beta Burst, is potentially going to do more to the Lash. Just barely 9% more, down to 40%. And yeah, the Shween does mean that there's no Toxic Ticks, despite that Water Cannon Synergy, which is actually very good for gold. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would have really co compromised the Valash there. It would leave it to 100% an Aquatic Roll and would kill. Now it's a little bit in the air. You got plus one special defense. Can an Aquatic Roll and kill from this position? Uh, it's going to be close. It might. It might. I didn't get to see exactly how much the Water Cannon did. But I think at 40%, it might be a bit too close. Maybe Trotter has the Calx though. Uh, we do know Adore Boros cannot stay in, so who is he going to be swapping into? Oh, and another one. <laughs> yeah, first swap is the Shween, giving Kinu just a little bit more protection onto that Valash. Trotter retreats 
for Monty Bigialis. Definitely a good choice here as its melee typing exists, but uh, Crystal Spike still going to do a bit of damage down to 72. Water Cannon now without that Synergy Master buff means that Valash does not fall down and there's no Toxic Synergy either, so there's no Toxic Ticks onto this Valash. He's got a peachy healthy 17% for a Scavenger buff to bring him back up. Yeah, very true, and I don't think this Valash is going to be staying around much longer. I think that Aquatic Whirlwind 100% will kill. Despite being at plus 2 special defense, I think just 17% a bit too low. So maybe could try to make a really good read, bring out the Cerny, really eat up that water damage uh, really well. And then you have the pressure for the following turn with those water cutting liddies. Uh, we'll see. But uh, for the side of gold, though... Hmm, what does he want to do here? Besides perhaps bring out the Cerniv, what does the Inu want to do? Oh, we saw it before. Maybe a good old Stonewall turn coming out from gold. Unless he feels like he's going to get punished from the Gialis. Yeah, I mean, there's always that possibility. So Shween comes out. I was thinking maybe a Skunch in that spot and then Cerniv in for Valash. Mm. But uh, yeah, the Cerniv Valash does happen. The, the Shween comes in instead. Sharp stabs onto the Cerniv. It is settling, so it's not going to take that plus one defense from that physical attack. So that is maybe a saving grace for Trotter. Yeah, you know, speaking about the settling trade, maybe this is gold trying to confirm is settling better than Colossity. <laughs> and I think it comes down to preference here. I think gold just feels confident, feels comfortable with the settling trade. And hey, sometimes settling does perform a bit better uh, if you're able to leave it on the board, of course, because, uh, yeah, just the attacks really start uh, adding up. But, of course, Colossity a bit easier to play, right? You just naturally get a lot of uh, defense up. You would have got plus one defense right there from the sharp stab, of course. But now I'm, I'm curious, is it is it worth it for Trotter to just double into the Cerneef until it has to swap or dies? Because he can do quite a lot of damage, and there's not really anyone that wants to swap in here, except for Skunch. Oh, all right. So Crystal Bite outspeeding the Gialis as well. That is a speedy Schween. All right. So there it goes. Crystal Bites are trading and Stonewall on the Gialis, but it might be a little bit too late. I think one more Water Cutting Lily would still take it down from this 12%. Yeah, that was uh, that was very well read and played from Gold, knowing that something was going to happen to buff up this Gialis just a little bit. And doing that damage before it comes through means that that plus two defense, it, it kind of doesn't matter anymore because he's still going to go down to either of these hits or both of these hits. Yeah, I mean, now Gialis in dire straits, that means that Valash is a little bit more free if he's able to come in without taking damage, you know, predicting some kind of death and, and healing himself up with that scavenger. The first one is all that it takes for it to start to, you know, snowball down mm -hmm. that hill. So, uh, so pretty good position for gold if he's able to survive a Valash swap. That is true. Now the question, does go want to play a bit risky? Try to bring in Valash here to try to eat it. But, you know, I think that's a bit too risky. I don't know if Trotter wants to keep in the Gialis. He does have Sharp Sap. He does have Hook Kick. But does he want to let the Gialis go right now? Hmm. Maybe. Actually. I, I think Gialis brings a lot to this game. You know, facing down Kinu and Valash and Shween, there's a lot of potential here. But he, he knows that he's slower than the Shween, and that's that's got to be what's scaring him right now. He's forced to use a sharp stabs, but he goes for the cage on Leonardo, wants to get himself the confined proc, which is definitely good. Oh, Ooh, but he catches the Shween on a swap, which means the sharp stabs is going into his belly, water cutting Lily now, likely killing this Gialis, meaning that he gets to swap in on two Thames that are trapped in place. Yeah, and I believe that's exactly what Trotter intended to. So keeping in the Shween, bringing in that Voldren. So has some big Noxious Bomb incoming onto the Shween, incoming onto the Cerneve. Either or is not a Colossity Cerneve. So Noxious Bombs will get the better of the Cerneve. 
within about two noxious bombs i do think it will be enough i think one noxious bomb should be enough for the shween i mean their cage so it becomes a bit more straightforward you just want to attack uh and hey leonardo still at a hundred percent so crystal spike noxious bomb maybe doubling up onto the surname because shween maybe not the most impactful let's see where this noxious bomb is going okay oh it did not kill the shween yeah, not quite, but there was still a lot of damage. Revitalized, though, from the Cernif means Shween might be able to live another day as Leonardo goes for the Stonewall on himself. He wants to be the tank his mother told him he could grow up to be, and he's becoming just that. Plus three, yeah. plus two is a fantastic way to go. I mean, turn seven to already have buff on a turret knight which is buffy on its own beefy and, yeah. and still has a hundred percent hp and really high stamina this is looking good yeah and what's online right now are we about to get another cage it wouldn't be that bad cerny it doesn't do too much against these Thames as well as Schween. it's back online you get plus one plus one again bringing them up to size but no no cage this turn uh swaps cerny out for the skunch all right, so maybe trying to play a little mind games against gold here. The Shween does stay in, does some de decent physical damage onto it, but does the Crystal Spike kill? And it does. All right. Yeah, Crystal Spikes is enough. That means that Noxious Bomb gets to hit Skunch. That's not going to do too, too much, but Skunch is a little bit fragile, so it is still decent damage nonetheless. It gives him plus two special defense. But now Leonardo, despite plus three defense, despite 100 HP, maybe he doesn't want to stay out here with this skunch. Yeah, and I think that's the idea behind no cage, because you know you were probably going to kill the Shween with something like a noxious bomb from that point. So it would be giving gold a free opening to really gun down your torch knight or your, or your bowler. And of course, so I don't think that's exactly why he didn't want to go with the cage. But now Velash is out, does he feel like he's able to get a kill here? Abby the Volarin is at plus two special defense. I think that's a little too much. I don't think Velash can kill from this position. So is it a good bait and switch? Let's take a look. Ooh, decides to stay in. I was thinking maybe sacrifice the Ukama, but no, HKS onto this Velash after it wasn't enough. Velash survives oh, as well. Savage Suplex, though, will be taking Volarin down, leaving Leonardo sitting for one more turn. The scavenger buff on Velash means he's going to survive this. Still spikes as well, down with 10% HP. And now Trotter, no good answers for this Flash, except, hmm, we didn't get the Aquatic Whirlwind, right? I believe Aquatic Whirlwind is still online for this Yukama, and it finds himself in the exact same position as it did previously in those opening turns where Aquatic Whirlwind should be able to close the book on Flash, just 10% remaining. So yeah, I think it is online. I don't believe we saw it. But you know, maybe a skunch is time to, to do a little damage onto Tortonite too. But knowing that Village doesn't want to be here, maybe Trotter wants to redirect that Yukama damage onto Skunch. Something like Aquatic Whirlwind Crystal Spike onto the Skunch doesn't seem all that bad. I'm thinking it could really bring down the Skunch possibly all the way down. Hmm. Yeah, I guess my fear with that play if he doesn't target his Valash, because I mean, there, of course, gold has two natures in the back. So it's such a free swap in for this Valash where they won't be taking any damage. It, it would be a fantastic play from gold. There, there's no downside whatsoever. But if he leaves this Valash in and Trotter targets out the skunch uh -oh. with the cage, he is trapping Valash. He doesn't want to let it live. He's going to do so much damage. He might actually target Skunch first, though, just because he knows Valash can't leave. Valash fails to swap out Ninja Jutsu, goes onto this Ukama, and does so much damage. And now, down to the Aquatic Whirlwind from this Ukama, he does target out this Valash. That means that he's free to bring in one of his natures. It could be the Kinu, could be the Cernif. I would imagine Kinu is probably the better bet, but now Cerniv doesn't want to take any of that Crystal Spikes damage, so I can respect that. Yeah, it definitely provides a brilliant answer onto the Yukama with that WCL. Hey, I think uh, 
you know, some saying Crystal Spike into the Yukama to kill the Yukama, but I'm pretty sure Yukama would have always outsped the Valash in that situation. So that's why Go wanted to retreat it. Uh, but yeah, now it's looking a bit rough for Trotter. Just on this board, Leonardo running out of stamina most likely has to rest his turn. And nothing truly pressuring out this Cernif right now. You know though, Tortonite's go actually never mind. Push is a thing, so no such thing as Doom. But there it goes, the WCL to close it out on Yukama. Yeah, I mean, now the biggest fear for Trotter is just got to be this Skunch. If he's able to do an Oshidashi or Haidouchi, I mean, that would be potentially GG's as Leonardo needs to stay healthy here. Adoroboros can kill Skunch and Leonardo can kill Kinu. But then when it comes down to Cernif versus a Tortonite, I mean, that's that's actually kind of close. Another cage once more. He doesn't want to let Skunch leave, but I think Gold has learned. He doesn't try to swap out this Skunch. He stays in. He wants to go for the aggro plays. Water cutting Lily onto this Adoroboros. Energy manipulation onto Skunch. Oh, it is just barely enough to bring Skunch to its grave. And that is right, that would have been huge if Skunch got off a of play, but I believe the final two Temtems for gold, and these are quite the Temtems, that nature salad package, Cernif getting the buffs, and hey, this is a colossal, or sorry, a settling Cernif, so every single turn, usually Cernif versus uh, Tortonite would be a death sentence, or it might still be, I think, plus five defense, a bit too tall of a mountain to climb, I want to say. Unless settling really gets out of control, we got about 18 turns. 18 turns for settling. I mean, you can't make any swaps, so every single turn leading on to, uh, into the end of the game, it's going to get an 8% increase in its attack every single turn, so that could make a difference. Maybe that's enough to propel it over that plus 5 defense. We'll see, because uh, Adorko should be going down here. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of in the air. It depends on how quickly Trotter can kill this Kinu. Adoro hanging on is nice. If it's able to outspeed, Hypnosis onto this Tortonite means that Kinu does survive a little bit longer. But of course, Adoro's Toxic Ink, it targets the Cernif instead of the Kinu. Wants to do some damage that way, but I, I think that that might be the wrong spot to target right now. Yeah, it's definitely because they overexerted. Uh, of course, Toxic Ink wouldn't have killed it. But yeah, Cerny was unable to do anything for the following turn. Now, Kinu could just simply beta burst the door Boros. But I think... Uh... Oh, no, no. Hypno went first. So yeah, Kinu is indeed faster. Unless the energy went up, as we're seeing here, to wake up the Tortonite. Wait a minute. Is this going to be... Uh, oh wait, Crystal Spike, depending on who was faster, wait, it could still be a Crystal Ooh, Spike remaining. That was so much stamina usage, it overexerted Tortonite. He had like 80%, maybe 70, but he was so high up there on that stamina. To not kill Kinu and overexert means that the double revitalize is coming through. And I think that that's got to be called GG at this point. Yeah, because Tortonite did overexert, right? Yeah, Tortonite just barely overexerted. It had to be by one or two stamina. That was that was pretty unfortunate on his end, but he does revitalize instead the Cernif a couple of times. He, he knows that Cernif is the win condition more so than Kino. Get it up and healthy before it's too late. And now maybe sacrifice? No, it's hypnosis again. He's oh, taking advantage. I'm Hypnosis outspeeding that three prior crystal spike. So, a speedy Kinu indeed. Because I thought a crystal spike would definitely be able to at least take care of the Kinu, but no hypnosis. So, one more time, Marzi. Double revitalize. <laughs> Bringing that Kinu <laughs> all the way up. This is insanely gross. Yeah, I mean, that was. Yeah, there, there it is. Revitalize, likely revitalize again. Just because there's not much else to do on this turn for gold. I mean, he's got these two tens. No, it, it is the stone wall. Okay. So that was uh, potentially a wasted revitalize then from Cernif, just because, I mean, Kinu is still going to go down to a crystal spikes this turn. Yeah, you know what? Maybe the double revitalize would have still gone down too. But yeah, now with the alert status, let's take a look how much a WCL is doing. So 84%. 
okay about eight <laughs> percent little by little can get the job done uh kinu just overexerts and hey toward tonight's garden maybe trying to recover some hp yeah i mean that's definitely not a bad idea he, he goes towards that kinu i think i would have put it on cernave just to force the bush soon uh you know wasting a lot of stamina and, and not letting it attack for the turn but I, I understand he wants to heal himself up. He wants to start those holds counting down for Tornade's Garden once more as early as possible. And he knows that, you know, Kinu is not going to be able to save itself. All right. So it's tired of that nature synergy with those revitalizers. So gets rid of Kinu and it's the 1v1 tour tonight. And let's take a look at these buffs real quick. So plus three, plus two for Cerny. And hey, there's just a couple moves to do. So Crystal Spike doing about 20% on the Cerny. Wait a minute. So Sweatband versus Sweatband coming down to the wire. We are in turn 20. This we saw was doing 8%, but that was the last turn. So maybe just 10% now. Okay, like 9% or something. <laughs> this is going to be a long one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, thankfully, there's only nine more turns, so it can't go too much longer. But it is I just think... going to be this trade once more. Crystal Spikes, I mean, it does do quite a bit. Yeah, wait, I think Tortonite might squeeze this one out. Of course, Revitalize is the enemy, though. So Revitalize here brings it back up to 80% or 85%, rather, I believe. Yeah, now here's the garden, so he's going to heal himself back up as well. And that's really what the race is going to come down to, is can he, I guess, keep himself healthy enough that he can bring below? <sighs> this is this is going to be really close, but I think that Cernif is winning this mm -hmm. one just based off of, you know, Revitalize coming every other turn and healing for more than a garden does. I, I think that stamina is... Trotter's enemy here is he went for confined instead of efficient. He's not able to spam those C spikes. He's <laughs> not able to do enough damage. Yeah, of course. But of course, he's also super tanky thanks to those uh, cages he was deploying earlier. And there goes the bush. Did he decide to rest? No, he went with the crystal spike. So costing him a bit of stamina. Uh, but yeah, looking good. Cerniv under control, 95%. Feeling good. Torjanite can't recover all that much. I believe it's just 8% of his max HP. Uh, or just 8% period. Here it goes. So 65 should be coming up to about 73, 74. Yeah, and I mean, this This just isn't going to be enough. He's got that 75.8 on Torjanite, but... Now Cernif is able to revitalize once more and Bush coming up soon and, and he's he's max HP. You know, there's not much that he can do about this. <laughs> Cernif with the sweatband, even I mean both of them have sweatband, but it's still it's still just not going to be enough for this poor poor Leonardo. Yeah, I mean he's forcing the bush out, but it kind of bites him in the butt as well. Cause uh if you don't read when the bush is coming out, you waste your stamina. So you know Trotter was maybe saying, Alright, Bush at the last turn, but no, Gold goes for the bush on the second turn. And you know, Bush right here again. Did Trotter rest his turn or does he want to try to get some damage? And did indeed try to get some damage. I mean, luckily they both have sweat bands, so not costing them uh, uh you know enough to overexert as the stamina keeps regenerating up but we are in turn 28 so two more turns 29 and 30 and then the tamer with the higher hp temtem will be taking it and it looks like that temtem will be the cerny standing for gold side yeah, I think the easiest change that Trotter could have made would have just been targeting that Kinu with the Dora Boros earlier on. But he does see the writing on the walls. He concedes the first match in the finals to gold. So I'm trying to think back. Who was the MVP that won it for gold? I guess, I mean, Cernif at the end of the day looking like the MVP. Of course, Valash, uh, Valash did do a handful too. But hey, it will be the Volarin catching the first initial ban. Who does Vola? Oh, gold decides to uh, the Nidrasil. So no fire Temtems on his squad saying Nidrasil might be problematic. 
And I guess I can see it. Maybe those uh, allergic spreads, the triapocrity trait, uh, could be could be an issue for him. Yeah, I mean that's the same first bands that we saw last time, so it's not too much of a surprise there. Uh, but then, you know, Volerant and Grumper, I believe that that Grumper is different. That wasn't one of the leads before. We saw the Valash Kinu prior. So trying out to uh, hard threaten out this Volarend is, is definitely a good play. He's hovering over that Skunch, but I don't think that he's thinking about it. Never mind. He he was definitely thinking about it. That <laughs> Skunch was on his mind. He and goes hey, for the Skunch. Is Gold feeling crazy one more time? I mean, he got away with murder the previous time he tried this. I don't know. I mean, the mind games start very early on. I mean, Trotter in the same position. Turby found himself... Do you just bait a burst of skunch just in case? I think you do. At this point, I would always bait a burst of skunch if I was playing. <laughs> it just feels so bad to have the skunch just stare you in the face, swap out the door boros, and it still be standing there. So I don't know. I think Trotter will be keeping it straightforward, but Gold, knowing that, could just make a good, good read and, you know, swap out the skunch for something like, oh, the Cernif already left or already got banned. So it could swap it for something like the Kinu. Could swap it for something like, uh, I guess doesn't have too much good temp temps. What is it? The Schween, perhaps? You don't want Valash to take it as that is some good neutral damage. You know, I this is this is a really complicated lead because of this Grumper on gold side. It, it's kind of the perfect counter on both of these. So I feel like... As, as much as we, we keep on saying, like, you've, you've got to do that because when it's something that easy, you just, you can't let that slip through. If you lose mm -hmm. the game because you don't attack the skunch, that is going to destroy your morale. Mm -hmm. But if you attack it and it's perfectly red and you do everything that gold, because his grumper is here and can kill you, then that's also just as demoralizing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Those mind games are real early on. Who is going to flinch? I mean, it's only Gold's turn to retreat. I mean, Grumper does have some big damage, though, on the Vola. And we saw Adore Boros cannot take two Thunder Strikes. It did over 50%. So two Thunder Strikes closes it out for Adore Boros. So that's just big boy damage right there that Trotter doesn't really want to give away too easy. So we'll see. We'll see. And Gold deciding he's trying to say size much or the Schween. I mean, size much really good against Tor tonight, really good against Gialis. Uh, but does decide to go with the size much, of course. And here we are, game number two of our finals. Who is gonna take it? Gold at game point. Game point, and he will be the winner. He will be the champion of this tournament. If not, Trotter saying, no way. I made it this far. I was undefeated in the Swiss. I'm not going down so easily. We're going to find out. Let's jump in. Yeah, so for gold, I, I like the size much as much as I love Shween. I, I, fantastic, Tam. I, I think it always has a place here. I, I think size much does the job a little bit better. I, I feel like Schween, for the most part, was just going to be countering Adora Boros. And as we learned, strangely enough, it's faster than this Gialis. So, you know, maybe that's another play. But uh, but Size Munch is also going to do a lot of damage to that Gialis, as well as the Tortonite and the Volaren. So I, I think that that's the better play. We have been coming into the turn one, it, it's all of the the mind games that we were talking about prior we do see the size munch swap in for the skunch so that's still weak to any ma or any mental damage uh, but then yeah trotter decides to swap gialis in but he swaps it in for the volar and not for the adora boros beta burst onto the size munch does just shy of 50 percent and thunder strike does much more than 50 percent yeah, and it looks like I was thinking about the other Adore Boros. It must have been Argus Saucy's Adore Boros because last time I went to 47. This one's going all the way to 41. And, you know, interesting decision, right? That was a scunch there and does swap into Size Munch. So maybe trying to call the bluff there saying, you know what? You're not even going to beta burst this spot. But just in case you do, you might as well not even do 50%. Or, you know, you know instead of doing the 100% on the scunch, just take a little bit under 50%. Uh, and hey, the Volarin, as you said, swapping into Gyan, so good hook kick coming into either slot could be okay. 
you need to do a little bit more onto size munch for that second beta burst uh so maybe a simple double gash too but hey size munch wreck is online a Gialis does not want to take that of course it is not heated up so it's not gonna straight up one shot this money but it's gonna do a good amount of damage definitely over 50 percent so let's take a look i'm really curious what this turn two entails yeah, I would imagine the size munch swap in. He he he's holding onto that double screen. He figures he's not going to take as much damage if it does come through. But and you know, I was expecting Gales to swap in for Adora Boros that turn. So uh, I, I might have even been a little bit more ballsy if I was gold and gone for a mud shower instead. But that would have played myself. So we do have Scunch swapping in now in front of an Adora Boros, no oh. less for that synergy. It does exactly 50% to this Gales and doesn't kill kill which oh man adora boros survives just long enough to get his emanip off he's not going to do enough damage to kill even with that hook kick dies much just barely holds on yeah so adora boros not going down so does have still that mental presence on the board and two melee uh temptance on gold side not feeling too comfortable emanip is a three prob but we saw the size much able to outspeed it of course the question here, of course, is Size Munch doesn't have Wreck, but it came in on the swap turn one. It stayed in turn two, of course, with Wreck. So Dim Mac is online. So that should be able to outspeed. Uh, Skunch only has Suplex and uh, Ashi Dashi available, or Hideuchi if he's running that. Does not have Ninja Jutsu just yet. So I don't think this Gialis goes down. But the door borrows in danger. I think a Dim Mac should be able to clean it up. Uh, that's if he does want to go into it. Hmm. What are you thinking, Rosie? I mean, this this could be a sweep if Trotter stays in with both of these Thames. A Savage Suplex from a Skunch is very scary, especially if he's holding on to Resistance Badge. And mm -hmm. since we didn't see a Momo on Gold's team, that's possible. So, I, I mean, that could be a Dimlock Savage Suplex sweep. But no, Gold retreats this Skunch for his big boy, the Lash. Oh, of course, the sharp stab outspeeding the Dimlock there. So, clean it up. That's exactly what the Skunch was left there or, you know, left the board because of that. And beautiful recognition for Gold. Uh, it slipped my mind. Of course, the sharp stab was incoming there. Just a little bit of HP to get it done. But now the Skunch comes back. The Darren, the Darren, the Adore Boris to stay because now Valash has a three prior move of his own, and that is the Crystal Spike going into that spot, most likely. And Skunch coming out now, Savage Suplex should be able to uh, to kill it. The question is though, we saw how speedy Gialis is, of course. Does it get off a hook kick? Because that's going to be a heavy, heavy blow onto this Valash. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, I, f I feel like Gialis is often built above that 170 mark uh, just because it is so common with everybody. So we may as well see that Tortonite does come in to eat the oh. <laughs> Savage Suplex. It goes before any hook kick shenanigans. Yeah. Gialis falls down. Scavenger proc on the lash means that nothing even matters. Yeah, back up to 100 HP. However, does not have Madness buff online. So uh, not as crazy as we're used to seeing the Valashes. But now uh, Naga is coming out to play another mental tem, Really scaring away the Skunch. I don't think it definitely wants to stay in. It feels like Grumper, if anything, wants to come out to play for gold. Because that's going to be one-shotting the Naga. So there's no such thing as Bamboozles. Uh, coming out from tour tonight's or tour i keep calling trotter tour tonight but from trotter's side <laughs> and it might as well be his nickname at this point uh, i don't think he would uh, he would he would mind it too much but hey i think that's a compliment now for for trotter mm -hmm. <laughs> a little compliment indeed but hey kinu pump uh pump, pumping up that valash does he want to go for madness buff though the Stonewall onto Naga gives it plus one special defense. Staring down this Valash, the beta burst does target the Skunch spot as it really does has to. But the Strange Vest onto this Naga means it's doing so much damage. Not quite 50% thanks to that Stonewall, but definitely a lot. 
Yeah, I think without that plus one special defense, it would have easily fallen below that 50%, making it really vulnerable to another one, of course. Hmm, now a tricky turn for Trotter. Let's take a look. He does have everything online for not guys. I believe Trotter has been doing the lullaby plays from his not guys there. So it does have that online if he chooses to just sleep the Valash, of course. Does have not guys fury online. What is the best bet? He knows he doesn't die to Valash. Valash will be going last. Maybe yeah, a double a up double though, him. right? Crystal Spike. Even a double. I don't think it would kill this Naga. I think, I think that really, Valash is the one who's in trouble here. I think a double up from Trotter would do quite a lot of damage. I, I think that uh, the lullaby play that you'd mentioned is actually really strong, as it controls tempo a little bit more. If Gold decides he wants to try and save Valash, that means he's also putting Grumper to sleep. But no, Trotter retreats it for his Volarend. Oh yeah, and Gold retreats Valash for Grumper as well. So Lullaby might have actually been a really good play. Oh, and there goes Tortonite's Garden. If it's into the Grumper, it's a feels bad moment. You're going to recover, but beautiful read for Gold. Bringing in that Camel Meal Grumper. No such thing as Doom and to make matters worse. We're going to get the Stonewall onto this Grumper. And Grumper really good, looking good. I mean, take a look at the board. A uh, Grumper has the Mud Showers for Leonardo. It has the Thunderstrike for Abby the Volrin. Thunderstrike for Adorboros. And Thunderstrike for Nagai. So buff the Grumper game plan. Look like this Grumper might be the win condition for Gold if it gets carried away. Because it has effective damage into the entirety of Tor uh, Trotter's board right now. Yeah, absolutely. And then the Scunge swap in just to try these spikes but it's not going to be enough as you know the noxious bomb goes that way but c spikes hits that grumper trotter just has to do some kind of damage the thunder strike comes through onto abby it does more than 50 percent despite the plus one special defense on this volaran from that noxious bomb so he doesn't kill if abby is able to do another noxious bomb but i mean there is a very healthy skunch standing next to it with quite a lot of attacks available who will definitely like to attack this volar end yeah or even the you know big old ashi dashi onto leonardo because the thunderstrike did enough to do 50 percent of course if a noxious bomb outspeeds which it will outspeed the grumper it might live, most likely will live by a couple HP. So maybe you do have to go in with the Skunch. But I don't know, part of me feels like a Kinu maybe coming out for the Grumper. But no, Haida Uchi to put this Leonardo to sleep for this turn. And that's a really good play. Skunch being the fastest 10. But the Plume, okay, bringing that Skunch down 33% reduction on his attack. I feel like I feel like Skunch doesn't really mind minus one attack all that much with that resistance badge and with Brawny. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> Mud shower is enough to bring down Leonardo, so there's no more of that. No more crystal synergy. Skunch is always gonna have some hard hitting savage suplexes. And this is a rough turn, so you know what? With the Sea Aura being online, that makes Grumper the fastest Temtem online. And energy or electric storm is online. That should be enough to close it out for the Nagas. guys. Not enough for the Volarin, but Skunch is still standing. The question here, though, is Psy Surge faster than Electric Storm? I think it will be, so maybe the Skunch can't really stay in. But Electric Storm seems a bit free. Of course, Nagas Fury can come out, but I think Grumper outspeeds that Nagas Fury. Let's take a look. Yeah, just in case Ooh. Kinu gets himself a buff, Fury does go first. So maybe this Grumper isn't the one speed we're used to seeing, but that buff means it doesn't even matter. Thunder Strike onto Naga, all the way down to zero. That times four damage. And now Adora Boros and Volarend both so weak to this Grumper. And Kinu does fall as soon as he came in but hey the deed has been done grumper has been buffed up it should be able to survive a beta burst 
maybe not a double up though so there could be a chance for trotter to swing things around what is the last temp temp oh the velash of course how can we forget the velash in the back chilling at 100 hp and there's still that deadly scunch in the back line this is seemingly gg gold should be our champion uh i mean anything can happen sometimes but in this situation it's overwhelmingly leaning towards gold here. Grumper deciding to go towards the back line. Skunch coming out. Uh, but Crystal Spike should close it. Or actually, Crystal Dust. No necessary to use more stamina than you need to. Yeah, I mean, leaving it down now just to this Volar and the Toxic Plume is a little bit of damage but it's really just about that plus special defense but the overexertion the overexertion is definitely the call for ggs and there we go it looks like gold will be the plus weekly tournament number 32 champion guys a round of applause <laughs>